Hello and welcome to this Tattersall's NH Cheltenham Festival preview show where myself, Richard Pugh, Jamie Codd and Robbie Power are going to be talking all things Cheltenham Festival. We're going to be discussing the big races over the four days, the big names, we have some special guests and most importantly, we're going to be pointing you in the direction of a few winners. On fire ladies out in front and he's going to win at the festival for the third time. The Ryanair goes to on wire Stay away Faye, he's all out. Sandra Cregan is getting closer, but it's stay away Faye who wins a dramatic Albert Bartlett. And it's Constitution Hill, one of the hurdling greats. He's close home, Constitution Hill, simply breathtaking, wins the champion herd in a row. Nothing was a match today for an ergamine. He's absolutely bolted up in the Midway champion chase. As they race up towards the line, Honey Sucker is responding to the calls of Rachel Blackmore and shall end with a victory. Honey Sucker has done it. Well, doesn't that just set the scene beautifully? And as I said, I am joined by an esteemed panel here, two ex-jockeys and a man in Richard Pugh who what he doesn't know about national hunt racing isn't worth knowing. And I wasn't even paid to say that, Richard. How are you? Oh, great, Vanessa. Thank you. Looking forward <laughs> to the evening. It's going to be great. It is. If you're going to be in that form and compliment us like that all night, we'll all, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll fly all along. <laughs> uh, boys, Robbie Powell, you, you brought your Cheltenham Gold Cup with you. Just, yep. to, just to remind us that you have ridden a winner of the Cheltenham Gold Cup. <laughs> it's seven years ago now, so people forget very quickly. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's fantastic. I've had some great days in Cheltenham. Uh, well, I had one good year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was great, something you never forget. Oh, I, I can believe it. I mean, watching back some of those replays, Jamie, it really does get you in the mood for the big week. I know we build up to it every year and everyone sort of gets a bit cross with the hype. But actually, right now, with two weeks to go, it's what it's all about. This is what, we, this is what we're here for. Oh, yeah. Look, at it's uh, the whole year. It, no matter what anybody says, the whole year, you know, it, it's momentum towards Cheltenham. And, um, yeah, like really looking forward to it. You know, it's two weeks now and... Yeah, it's going to be class. Two week countdown is on. Obviously, we are off the back of some pretty shocking news in regards to Constitution Hill, the champion hurdle. We'll be getting that to that in due course, guys. But let's kick on. Day one, race one, is of course the Supreme Novices. And this is a race that's had some flip-flopping favourites all season long. At the moment, your betting is the likes of Ballyburn, Tully Hill and Mystical Power, all up at the top of the betting for, of course, that man, Willie Mullins. He'll be having a few mentions on this show. You've got Firefox in there, Jericho de Repine and others. But that first horse I mentioned, Ballyburn, has two options, the Supreme or the Bering Bingham, up in trip, of course. And the first of our special guest tonight is the man who purchased Ballyburn in his early days, the legend that is Ian Ferguson. Ian, it's great that you could join us today for this one is going to be a relatively brief chat, so don't worry too much about the length of this, but just very briefly for anybody who doesn't know your past and your history, can you just summarise your background, not only in racing, but your relationship with Ronnie Bartlett as well? Uh, as far as Ronnie Bartlett's concerned, we go back a long way. I sold him his first horse. He actually won a pointy point on himself. And uh, he rode him in a hunter chase in Cheltenham. And they completed the course. I'll not say they won or anything like it, but uh, they got round, put it that way. And since then, that must be 30 odd years ago now. And since then, we have been good friends. And uh, I don't think he goes past me to try to buy a horse or. You know, he uses me to, to source horses for him, put it that way. So, OK, well, hang on. We've just got to go back to quite a crucial point then. What sort of jockey was Ronnie Bartlett in the saddle? Come on, give us the inside track. Uh, well, he wasn't Derek O'Connor. <laughs> I mean, not many people are, so that's, that's a fair enough comment. You've been kind to your long-standing friend there. Um, and, he, he, and he, was through good, the, he was a good hunting jockey. He was a good hunting jockey. He, he likes hunting a lot. He's a, he's a good rider over country, so he is, put it that way. 
read into that what you will, viewers out there. Um, <laughs> tell me this then, in terms of your successes together on the track back when you were training, of course, uh, and at Cheltenham too, um, you must have had some real high days together. Yeah, we had lots of fun. Uh, we had lots of pointy point winners together. <coughs> we had a good horse, Joe Blake, that went nearly the whole way in. He won the, well, he won at Punchestown, he won at Stratford, he won at Ferry House. Gorn Park, he won all the big hunter chases except the one in, in Cheltenham and uh, Zemsky came along after that and he won the Fox Hunters for us in Cheltenham and uh, and after that I was sort of downsizing in this training thing and more sourcing horses for people and started to buy foals for other people and that's where it's continued since. We will get on to talking about the present and, of course, Ballyburn and Banbridge. But just just for a moment, indulge me, because when Zemsky won the Fox Hunters, what was that mm -hmm. day like for you to do that upside to one of your great friends, somebody you had such a good relationship with, to provide him with that winner and the whole team around you as well? What was that day like? Do you have sort of, I mean, obviously you have fond memories, but any reflections oh, oh, yeah. for us? Oh. It was a brilliant day for both of us. Most of my horses were always sold on, so I didn't have many opportunities to have a crack at those type of races. I was a producer of pointy pointers and sell them on, and Ronnie was about the only person that did keep horses with me, you know, to, to have a go at these things. So obviously to win that was a great delight for both of us. It was like me winning the Gold Cup. It was like the Gold Cup of my uh, sort of standard of horses. and. Uh, it was, it was brilliant, brilliant to say the least. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. Magic, yeah, I'm sure. Um, as I said, let's focus on the present though. And of course, two big talking horses for you and Ronnie going into this year's Cheltenham Festival are Ballyburn and Banbridge. We'll start with Ballyburn because what a revelation mm. he's been. Just take us back to purchasing him yourself. Where was that? What did you pay for him? And crucially, what did you like about him, Ian? Well, the first saw him, Wilson Dennison and I, who's a great supporter of mine, we, we tour around stud farms every year in Ireland. We go off on a kind of a journey. We do Wexford and Waterford and wherever else, Cork and wherever. We have certain farms that we go to every year that have been lucky for us through the years. And Wilson likes to have a deal at home with stud owners. Uh, we weren't able to buy Ballyburn at home. The simple fact was the McCarthy's, uh, Bobby and Robert had him entered for the Tattersall sale and they didn't want really to disappoint Tattersall's by taking him out of the sale at that late date. So uh, we followed them through to Tattersall's and we bought him and another horse that we would like to have bought at home that day, Kerry Hill. They both were in the same field together at Bobby's whenever we saw them. And uh, Kerry Hill has gone on to win a graded race there recently for uh, Ruth Jefferson. And uh, we bought them, the two of them, in the ring that day off McCarthy's, a beach of stud. Yeah. Wow. Wow, what a story. And, and so fascinating that, you know, you liked him from the very off and, you know, were so keen to purchase him even then. Um, no. In terms of his career progression and what he's done on the track, he doesn't have necessarily the most... Um, I suppose early on in his career, in his bumper days, and then in the first couple of hurdle runs, you know, they, they put him in pretty shallow waters and then he sort of jumped up to that grade one level. Why was it that he's taken that career path, that sort of softly, softly approach? I think that's partly down to Ronnie Bart, that he doesn't like to overface his horses. And it was his recommendation that Willie didn't take him to the, the champion bumper in Cheltenham last year. Right. Ronnie, in the past, we have had horses in the past that looked good, went to Cheltenham, ran credibly in the, the, the champion bumper, but didn't train on after it. And Ronnie was pretty adamant whenever David Manassa came on to the scene to share the horse with Ronnie. Ronnie made that statement, the fact he said, David, the only one thing I want to stipulate is I don't want to be at Cheltenham in his first season. Wow, okay, that is interesting. So that came from Ronnie. And then... Yeah. Uh, well, we have to sort of get into the nitty gritty with him because obviously we've got this debate over him being a two miler or a two and a half miler at this point in his career, whether he goes yeah. to the Supreme or the Bering Bingham. Um, from your point of view and your knowledge of the horse, what do you think he's going to be best suited to? Well, the day I wanted to saw him win his pointy point, he obviously looked like a staying chaser, but it was the speed he did show in the pointy point for he, there was a horse fell in front of him at the second last. 
I thought his chance had completely gone. I think he must have been 15 lengths off the, the other two leaders going to the last fence. And he just seemed to come and pick them up for fun, which was obviously a sign that this fella's got a bit of an engine. And uh, I recommended him to Ronnie Wilson. Dennison owned him at that time. I recommended him to Ronnie then. There was a bit of hiccups went on before Wilson and Ronnie were able to come to an arrangement about a price. <laughs> and uh, they're both hardened businessmen, both used to a deal, and that was it. But they got it ironed out anyway. The horse belonged to Ronnie, and David Manasseh had asked Ronnie the previous year to find a horse that he could join up with them in partnership. So Ronnie offered him the share in the horse at that time. And, but his only, the only input he had to it was that, and he stipulated at the time he asked Ronnie, was that the horse went to Willie Mullins to be trained. He had an ambition to have a horse with Willie, and that was that. So, right, uh, well, but that's... as I say, the day he won his pointy point, he looked a good horse. And his bumpers, all right, he runs a bit funny with his head down. You would think he was pulling the arms out of you. But as Paul Townend rightly says, his bark's worse than his bite. Or <laughs> it's his head courage. He just likes to carry his head low. He's not really pulling your arms out at that stage. But Patrick also made the statement, it wasn't until you got after him that you really found what was under the bonnet in his bumper races. And uh, he seems to be more professional and more happy over hurdles. I think he likes jumping and uh, so forth. So far, so good. So far, so good. Ian, you have answered that beautifully, but you've skillfully managed to dodge the question of two miles or two and a half miles. But I'll allow you that pass because you're kind enough to come on this show for us. I will allow <laughs> that for you. We will wait and see when the decision is made. And it may well be Sunday morning, pretty much, that we will know our fate with uh, Bally Byrne. Very much looking forward to seeing him. And it, it moves us nicely on to Bambridge, who's a horse I am so fond of. And of course, so looking forward to seeing him in the Ryanair. And again, uh, uh, just take us back to the start with Bambridge because he's followed a similar path to that of Ballyburn in terms of the people involved with him the whole way through, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. I bought him from the late Kieran Lennon as a yearling in uh, Tattersall's and he went to Wilson Dennison's farm after spending a winter with my son Paul at his yard and Wilson campaigned him as a four-year-old. I watched him run, it was the Covid year, he ran in two stroke three pointy points and I thought he was a shade unlucky in them. And it just happened to Ronnie said to me, have you seen anything nice this year? I said, I saw one horse that I bought previously with Wilson. And I said, I think there's a future with him. He looks a nice horse for the future. And uh, that was that. Yeah, and, and what a time that he's had on the track, really. I mean, he's not had loads of racing. He's still a relatively young, you know, he's not, a, he's not an old horse anyway. And yet it feels mm -hmm. like Bambridge has been around for such a long time in such a way. And I was looking at his race records. You know, he's nine from 16. He's four from six over fences. And crucially, he's two from two at Cheltenham. And that track form is what we're all latching onto here now for the Ryanair, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was especially good round Kempton the last day. For Kempton's a very fast track. And when he was able to come and pick up Nichols' horse that day, I thought it was a bloody good performance. And, you know, I think I think if, if, if the ground is he's, he's a bit ground dependent, that's all. Or I don't think it bothers Bally Byrne what kind of ground it is, other than major fast. Obviously, I don't think Willie would ever run him on that. But I think Bam Bridge definitely needs a decent surface to show his best off. He, he, Joseph ran him once in a bumper and he couldn't even walk in the bumper. You know, he said he was, you know, pathetic that day. But ground that he likes, he seems to be pretty professional on it now. So he does. I mean, look, if you're going to have a horse that's uh, a little bit ground dependent, you don't mind it being spring ground, given that he can have no. a go at Cheltenham, Aintree and Punches yeah. down, do you? No, well, Ronnie has already said uh, they took him, they travelled him to Cheltenham last year. The same will apply this year, unless it's shown to be bog soft before they leave Ireland. But if there's any chance of good ground, he, he will travel, and the, the decision will be made basically on the day. He has uh, still got entry, Ferry House, Punchestown coming up after that, and hopefully, if it didn't, if it the ground didn't come right at uh, Cheltenham, he would take in some of those festivals. 
Yeah, actually, it, it, it reminds me of obviously 12 months ago when they did take him out because of, as you say, the softer ground. And it takes yeah. brave connections, you know, a brave owner and a brave trainer to make that call when a race is winnable, when you're there for it, when you're still yeah. at the track. But to make that call and then be rewarded later with obviously the entry success, you know, that must yeah. feel yeah. really good, I guess, for you guys. Well, Ronnie and I have made lots of mistakes in his life, and I think we've both learned from them. And Ronnie doesn't put pressure on trainers at all. And uh, usually the, he was quite happy to Joseph to make the call. And when he made the call, he was quite happy with that. And the same will apply this year. Yeah, our fingers crossed we get a good ground. Good to soft ground, Chelton will suit everyone. No excuse ground, <laughs> as I like to call it. Um, <laughs> You've been very generous with your time, so we will wrap up. But any, any other horses for our viewers out there to watch out for over the coming, not necessarily at Cheltenham, but maybe in the spring or anything nice that you've got up your sleeve that you'd like to mention for us, Ian? Well, Willie Rome's another horse that came through the Denison Academy, Tully Hill. Uh, oh. Wilson had him and he won his point to point with him. And uh, he obviously goes for the Supreme. It's the only entry he has. So uh, that'll be interesting for him too. Uh, yeah, I don't want I'm... to see that. I don't want to see the two of them running in the one race. If for any chance Tully Hill didn't go and they switched Ballyburn to that, well, I would accept that. But I don't want to see the two of them taking each other on personally. So I don't. Okay, fascinating then. Hopefully for your sake, they will be kept separate in that case. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, as I say, you've been so generous with your time, Ian. Good luck with these horses for not only Cheltenham, but of course the spring festivals and beyond. And thank you so much for your time today. It's been much appreciated. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, well, it was great to hear from Ian Ferguson there. Some real interesting insights to those horses, obviously in their early days as much as anything. But boys, I think crucially there, the nugget he gave away, if you were really listening, which I know all three of you were, Jamie Codd, you included, is, you know, I pushed him there for an answer on Ballyburn two miles or two and a half, and he wasn't going to give anything away until right at the end when he mentions Tully Hill going for the Supreme and Ballyburn would have to switch if he was to go to the Supreme indicating that surely the two and a half miles is where he's going. Am I right, Robbie? No, you're not. Okay, great, good start. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Tell me why I'm not. Well, Tony Hill is owned by Chibley Park and Ballyburn is owned by Ronnie Bartle, as we know, and Willie will go where he wants to go with the two horses, and that's <laughs> simple as that. Um, I read in the paper today where Cheltenham are now betting soft ground to start the meeting, um, and I think Ballyburn is an exceptional racehorse what he did in Leperstown at the Dublin Racing Festival, we know who good Slade Steel is. And he proved on the day how good he was, pulling seven legs tier of um, King of Kingsfield and Absurd was back and forth, two horses who were favourites for two handicaps in Cheltenham. Wow. And Ballyburn has, has quickened away from him. He's, he's a horse with, with everything. He's, he's stamina, but he's a lot of speed as well. And if I was a betting man, which I'm not, I would say Ballyburn would run in the, in the Supreme if the ground is going to be soft. Okay, and he's your selection for the race then, as we yeah, I think I, I think whichever novice hurdle Ballyburn runs in, he'll win. He's an exceptional racehorse, and I think he'll um, he'll, be, he'll win either the two or two and a half one. Wow, confident shout to start, Richard. Do you agree with that statement? Do you expect 100%. to see him there? 100%. Oh, you do. Wherever he goes, he wins. Uh, I, saw, I saw him actually wow. mention the point of point that he ran in, and he shouldn't have won. He was hampered. He was brought off the track. The race was gone on him, and and it was it was done for. And good horses always find a way to win, and he did. So, I think Willie has the the whip hand here. He decides which race he wants to win with Ballyburn, and he covers his options from there. I'd worry about Tully Hills jumping in a, in a in a. In a supreme novice, I saw him point to point as well, and he went down to the last, and he wasn't sure, and he paddled out through it, and he's a bit deliberate over his hurdles. So I'm not sure Tully Hill is the answer, even if Ballyburn doesn't go. He's a very talented horse, and he pushed a dream to share. But uh, Ballyburn is so obvious that we can't keep leaning on him. So maybe <laughs> for an each-way bet, tell her the name, who was a graduate of last year's um, Chatham Festival sale. Johnny Burry had, had him. He won at Boris House, which is on next Sunday, 12 months ago, and now he jumps into a supreme novice from the wow. festival sale. So 25 to 1, a bit of each-way value, and I'd love to see Asian Master run a big race for Tony Costello and young Tom Costello, grandson of the great Tom Costello, who won so many Gold Cups. He's, he's a real amateur. He's about 6 foot Four. Oh, uh, yeah. His weight will keep right for as long as it does. 33 to 1 each way. That's my heart bet. My head bet is tell her the name, but you're right, Bellyburn wins. Okay. <coughs> uh, Jamie Codd, do you have anything else to add in to the supreme conundrum? Uh, not really. I think uh, Willie Mullins will make his mind up late. Um, I don't know, Poppy, you think ground, it will be soft. 
Cheltenham Dry is so so quick. It's it's probably the the most well drained track in uh, in England and Ireland. Um, so if it was soft on the Saturday, I could see it being good ground on the Tuesday easily. Um, and I think that that will depend if the ground is good, if it's good good healing. I think he'll go for the longer trip. And I think if it's on the soft side, he will stay over the two mile Ballyburn. Um, the horse I like, uh, Firefox. Uh, you know, he was top lot here in a derby sale. Um, you know, when when you're selling stores, um, you know, for a top lot to go on and be a good racehorse. Um, and that's what we got in Firefox. So uh, I'd love to see him, you know, he beat him before. Um, albeit Ballyburn now needed, probably needed to run. Uh, Firefox had a run under his belt. But, you know, he's a talented horse. And I think he could run a big, big race. Gordon seems to think he has him fairly well. Uh, he thinks that Nace in the Lawlers, he wasn't 100%. So um, I'd love to see Firefox run okay. a race in the spring. OK, we've had a few names into the mix then for the Supreme. I like that. Variety to start. Um, viewers out there, do get involved. We want to hear from you in regards to what you fancy for these races, who you agree with, who you don't agree with. Do get involved. Do it via Facebook and Twitter, or now obviously known as X. Uh, comment, get involved, and at the end of the show, we'll be answering some of your questions. So if you have any questions for the boys, then send them in, and we'll hopefully get through a few of those questions towards the end of the show. Let's kick on, guys. Arkel time. Now, this is a conundrum for me because, for me, the race totally revolves around, obviously, the long-time Antipost favourite, Supreme winner in Marine Nationale, who's now a bigger price than he's really ever been for this race, given his defeat when we saw him at the DRF, by Ilete Toms, who I believe is kind of a bit pushed <coughs> aside because of the hype around Marine Nationale. Jamie, I will start with you here. Do, are you happy just to draw a line through Marine Nationale's defeat at Leopard's Town? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like you can forgive, you can forgive a horse. Um, you can definitely forgive a horse a bad run. Um, ground is a lot different this year compared to last year when he was, say, uh, when he when he won as a novice in Fairy House. It wasn't. It was goodish ground, and then he came on to Cheltenham. It was good ground. So, if the ground stays nice. Um, he, he definitely is good enough. I suppose his, um, you know, I think his jumping will be fine. I thought he jumped okay in Leperstown out of softer ground than ideal. Like he only has about 10 lengths to make up in Leperstown, so if it's, it's, not a, it's not a big thing. Um, found a 50 for me is probably the most solid horse that is in the market at the minute. He's every day he's run this year. It's just been very, very consistent. So for me, I think he probably sets the standard, even though he was beat by um, Ile Thomps. Um, so for me, found a 50 is probably your safest bet. Bit of value and safety, I yeah. suppose. Yeah, yeah. I can see that angle because there are so many questions, Robbie, about the horses in behind the sort of the top two in the market, I guess, when you get down to likes of in the pocket. Fasal Vega, we're expecting for him to potentially step up in trip and he, the wheels have come hit off him this season. We do get insight coming up, by the way, from Patrick Mullins as well on that. So stay tuned. But it's a wide open market if Marine Nationale doesn't show up, which he didn't when we last saw him. Even if he does show up, he won't win. He doesn't jump well enough. Bloody hell, you're He's really full of it today. <laughs> He's had a win in operation. He won a very ordinary beginner's chase in Leperson at Christmas. I don't think he ran that much worse on the bare form than when he won his beginner's chase uh, wow. to the grade one. That was a big step up. He didn't jump well enough. He didn't travel well enough. Yes, he's a better horse on better ground, but I don't think he's going to be a better chaser than he was a hurdler. I think he's going to be a worse chaser than he was a hurdler. So, um, for me, I think Quilixius each way, he's a triumph hurdle winner. Good run the last day in, um, in, uh, in Nace when he won impressively. We kind of 
I had to put my hands up and take a, blame, a bit of blame for this is my race plan and roll with Henry, but I was the one that suggested he should run over three miles. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we ran him over three miles in punches and that fairly backfired. So, um, Consider this Robbie Power eating some humble pie as he tips him up for an arkle. Yeah, yeah. like, I love that. So <laughs> he was, um, you get it wrong. This is the oh, biggest news ever. Here this here preview. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is live. This is going out. We can't yeah. edit well, this well, out. I remember, you know when, I remember when Tully Hill won and his, uh, his, ran his maiden hurdle, sorry, in... Um, punches down over two six and I walked down and he made a bad mistake at the third last and I said to Willie um, he got he got a fright after he made the mistake and he said I don't know what David Casey was doing running over two six so <laughs> Henry was <laughs> kind of saying the same when I ran clicks <laughs> over, asked him clicks over three miles what were you doing running over three miles so yeah, yeah look we went back in trip uh, in punches town or in Nace and he was very very good so he's a triumph hurdle winner good course form he jumps really really well so I think around 14 to 1 is a great each way chance in the race. It's a wide open arc. Yeah, it's wide really open is. as it seemed for a long time, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would agree with that. I, I fear there's no real superstar in there, given what you've just said about Marine Nationale. But let's focus on the positives. Who would you like to throw into the mix? Richard? Yeah, I'd be with Jamie. I think found a 50. Oh, okay. He'd only jumped five. If you look back to Dan Roy, he actually jumped five fences. I always agree with Jamie. By Breaking the way, news. It'd be quite boring for two hours. <laughs> Whatever Jamie says, I just tend to fall. <laughs> <laughs> he only jumped five fences in Dan Ryan or six fences with the sun when he met I am Maximus in his grade one. He, he'd only had four or five fences jump, so he was he was a novice under all codes meeting an Irish national winner. So the 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 they the couldn't have been further apart in terms of experience so it'd allow him that I know Illetay Tom beat him but I just think up the hill in Cheltenham he'll hit the line harder uh, Tom Fahey who would have shod many of probably Jesse's uh, many of your Cheltenham winners I'd yeah, say Braid yeah. found a 50 so it'd be a lovely result for him he went through one of our Cheltenham sales I, I don't know Marine National I thought he was foot perfect in his beginner's chase he's, he's jumped like a two miler he's too deliberate through the air yeah. Uh, his jumping okay. was fine, like he was getting from A to B, but he's not quick. A two mile chasers have to be rapid. I thought when he was in front, he was just having a, a look, but when he went down to the ditch the third last and he needed one, he, he was at it. Anyway, look, I, I agree. I think Michael O'Sullivan knew from too far out he was in trouble. He sat on him, he never moved. It was like, it's a bit like Paul and Gaelic Warrior. He knew he was hanging on to nothing, so we chance found a 50. Me and Jamie always stayed together. Okay. I, I, I felt as well with Marie <coughs> National, you said he doesn't quicken or jump quick enough on the ground. The ground in Leperstown the second day, was the old ground rolled in tacky? It was deep. Whereas when he ran at Leperstown at Christmas, it was fresh, a fresh track, nice ground. Even though it was soft, it was still fresh, soft. Whereas in, at the Dublin Racing Festival, for me, it was rotten ground. And I thought he jumped like big fences around Leperstown. I thought he jumped well enough. I think he'll be a lot slicker on the day. You cannot ride that horse. Uh, you can't ride him off after one ordinary run but okay. for me found 50. Well, I'm so writing them off anyway. Some difference of opinions that's what we have you on the panel for I love it love to see it let's move on champion hurdle time big shake up guys today obviously Constitution Hill works badly market goes mental um, now market suspended for quite some time and now we don't even know if he's going to run very stressful but won't be if you're a state man backer of course and he's taking on the likes of well I mean in behind him really the market is pretty weak you've got the likes of irish point uh, priced up voban not so sleepy lucia in there zarek the brave as well all bigger prices so if constitution hill doesn't show up here or if he's had a problem in fact robbie i'll start with you because you're in yards all the time you know how this works the news that we've had on constitution hill in your opinion right now how likely is it that we will see him in a champion hurdle um it, it all depends on the scope um and nicky henderson said today he had a uh, a sample he was heading off to the vets to get tested so it all depends on how much mucus is in his lungs it could clear up in three or four days four or five days but it could linger on for a bit longer um i suppose the, the big thing is it's not the first bad scope that he's had this year he missed the international hurdle in, in um yeah in cheltenham because of a bad scope so maybe he's been a horse that's been hard to train this year for some reason or another i wasn't blown away by him in Kempton at Christmas. Um, I just thought he went through the motions. He didn't do anything more than, or better than what Stateman has done all this season. And even before the bit of work this morning, I was fancying Stateman, not to necessarily beat him, but to, to give him a big run for it because I think Stateman's improved. I know Paul Townend <coughs> felt last year in Shetland that Stateman didn't turn up. He knew after jumping two hurdles he was beaten. So I think he's a better, stronger horse this year. But it's going to be a challenge and there's no better man than Nicky Henderson to get him back in the space of exactly two weeks oh no. um, to Cheltenham and if anyone can do it Nicky can do it. Is there anyone else you'd want to mention for the champion hurdle away from those top two? Anything that you think? No, no? I, I, I think if um, 
Constitution Hill doesn't turn up, you could have Irish Point run and okay. he'd have an each way chance in the race. Um, I know Gordon's quite keen to, to split him and Tia Poo up. Um, of course, yeah. So he'd like to go to the champion hurdle if the ground was on the soft side with Irish Point. So he's a possibility if, if Constitution didn't, didn't make it. Look, he, he's a horse who's done very little wrong this season, really. Like He's won over two and three miles, yeah. so he's, um, yeah, look, he's a very good horse. OK, um, Richard, how are you viewing the champion hurdle market as we look at it right now? I fancied Stateman to beat Constitution Hill oh. anyway, as well. Um, I, I just he, His last run uh, of last season, he beat Charge at three lengths and he didn't blow him away. And Charge was beaten either side of it. So his one wow run last season was beating Stateman, who we hear wasn't right. And Stateman is just... he's. He's the perfect racehorse. It doesn't matter how you ride him. It doesn't matter how you present. He just he just delivers. Anyway, it's 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 been quite obvious now at this stage. We have to galvanise our inner kicking king or binocular to believe in Constitution Hill now because they were both out until they were back in again and they course, did deliver. Yeah. And if anyone can do it, Nicky can do it. I think Zarek the Brave or Pied Piper for me each way, twenty five to one, thirty three to one. That's where I would be diverting my my fibre each way. Jamie. What's to be on the champion hurdle for you? Um, I look at it. I, I, I disagree with the lads, obviously. <laughs> I think Constitution Hill is just a monster. Um, Stateman, rightly or wrongly, if he wasn't, I, I, I don't think he's improved. I think he's, he's grand, but Constitution Hill, the way he won last year, what he does in every race, um, I think he's just a fantastic racehorse, and I just love to see him back and um yeah put up another good performance and and win another champion hurdle i just i love seeing good horses he's a very very good horse and i'd love to see him win it again yeah on on those sparkling days he's magic i, I the way he hurdles everything about him but um Obviously, his participation is currently in doubt, and the horse that might be able to pick up the pieces is, of course, Stateman, trained by Willie Mullins, who has a whole raft, a whole boat full of horses going to the Cheltenham Festival. So we had to get the insight from someone in the Mullins team. So we've made the call to Patrick Mullins, and he starts off by talking to us about the champion hurdle, but then we move on to all topics. So let's hand over to Patrick, who I spoke to earlier. Patrick, it's great that you could join us. Thank you very much for your time. And of course, we're not going to keep you too long because if we were to talk about all the horses Willie Mullins is running at the Cheltenham Festival, we'll be here all night and nobody needs that. So this is going to be quick fire and to the point. And we're going to start, Patrick, no niceties, thank you very much. We're just going to start straight in with the champion hurdle chat because of course, everything is up in the air. Constitution Hill, will he run, won't he run? Disaster for the race, but as a state man fan yourself, you probably don't see it too much of a disaster. Yeah, look, if it is only a bad scope, two weeks is plenty of time to get over it for, for Constitution Hill. Um, he'll be he'll be hard fit, he'll just need to be freshened up. Uh, but Stateman's in fantastic form at home. Um, and if Constitution Hill isn't on his A game, uh, then that gives us a superb chance. It does indeed. Now, I've got to ask, because everyone's asking, is there any chance that if Constitution Hill wasn't there, that Lossy Mouth might be there? Or is that far-fetched? Um, yeah, look, I suppose she's still in the race and she's left in it for a reason. But I would imagine the mayor's hurdle looks like her best chance of winning a race. Uh, Stateman is still a hugely formidable opponent for a five-year-old mayor. And I think, like Honeysuckle and Annie Power, both went for the mayor's herd before going for the champion. And I think that looks like a well-trodden path. Fair. We like that. Uh, just one last question on Stateman himself. You know, we've seen the issues Constitution Hill has had. And part of being a great racehorse is being able to take your racing, take your training, eat up every night. And that's what Stateman does. And I think you must feel that he probably doesn't really get the recognition he deserves at this point of his career. Well, look, he's not flashy. Uh, he just gets the job done. Like I said, he's like Roy Keane's postman. He just gets to get, turns up and goes home. Um, but have no doubt, this, this fella could be as good, as good a hurdler as we've had. Um, you know, I think he's got huge ability. And um, he definitely is well up to winning a champion hurdle. And he's just unfortunate to be in Constitution Hill's era. He is indeed, and we'll see how that race and that market pans out in the next couple of weeks. Of course, we all hope Constitution Hill will be there to make it at such a brilliant race. Uh, let's move on and talk about a couple of the other headline acts. Uh, we might as well bounce straight up across the gallop into Shams. Um, obviously, incredible in the race in the Gold Cup 12 months ago, and his latest two performances have been sparkling, specifically that Christmas one. I can't get out of my head, Patrick, the way in which he galloped through the line that day. I just thought that was him at his very best. Am I right in thinking that? 
Yeah, look, that was jaw dropping, and and to be honest, it was a bit unexpected. You know, his work before Christmas hadn't been mind blowing, um, but his performance certainly was. And I think you know, like himself and Statement, they both danced every dance. They've had they turned up in the three Grade Ones pre Cheltenham. They're going to go to Cheltenham. They go to Punchdown. Um, as you said, the great horses are fit, hale, and hearty, and touch wood that you can continue the way their season's been so far. In terms of galloping, though, now going to the Gold Cup, um, do you believe he is a better horse with these more positive tactics than he was 12 months ago as maybe not a fully furnished horse in terms of his sort of mental ability to settle, etc. in a race? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, is he a better horse? I don't know. I think his Christmas performance was probably his, his career best, so you could argue that. Um, last year, you know, we were thinking the trip was going to be a bit of a question mark. This year, it's not. I think it'd be much easier for Paul Townend to ride a race. He can just keep things simple. Um, and, you know, being able to ride a horse in that manner might uh, mean the final performance is better. OK, let's move on at pace then. Uh, we will do some novice hurdlers, Patrick, because this has so many of us scrambled. Uh, Tully Hill looks like the obvious starting point in the Supreme. Tell me, how much has this horse surprised you this season, Tully Hill? The biggest surprise from him was how far he got beaten the first time. Um, I mean, <laughs> okay. look, in, in P P Punchestown last year, uh, we decided to run Tully Hill in the champion bumper and Ballyburn in the winner's bumper. Um, Tully Hill would be a better workhorse at home. So we've always held him in the highest regard. Um, what I would say is Tully Hill is a horse that gives everything very much on the bridle, whereas Ballyburn, you have to wind him up. So they are different types of horses. Um, his jumping hasn't been fantastic. He has his own way of doing it. It's improving, but it's still far from slick. Um, so the engine is without doubt there but the jumping does need to continue to improve to win a Supreme Novices. How do you see the Supreme Market, Patrick? Just on a wider note, never mind your horses alone, obviously Mystical Powers in there, Ballyburn, the conversation about him and the two and a half miles, etc., etc. But in terms of the race itself, the Supreme, it's had flip-flopping favourites all season long. There's no horse that's kind of been at the top of the market throughout. Do you think that's because it's wide open because there's a good level of horse or is it a substandard Supreme? Well, look, with a dream to share not having gone hurdling, that obviously blew it wide open. Um, and then obviously Tully Hill blotted his copybook and Ballyburn looked like he was going to be a two and a half and now maybe he's going to be a two miler. So I don't think it's below par. I think there's three or four top quality horses at the, at the head of the affair and I'd expect them all to be make their mark in open company next year. OK, so you think it's a, dec it's a decent crop then. We'll take that. Uh, mystical power? Like, where does he slot in against the Tully Hill, for example? Very difficult horse to, to size up. Um, his work at home would have been very average. You know, he, we didn't run him last spring. We started off in Ballon Robe. He won, but didn't win particularly well. Um, he then went hurdling at the Galway Festival, where he took us by surprise with how well he won. We then gave him a break uh, to give him an order to give him a chance to be a, a Cheltenham horse. His work before the Moscow Flyer was fine you know he was supposed to run in the the lauders but it was called off with the fog so he got rerouted and what he did in the moscow flyer took us all by surprise jockey trainer owner um everyone i think so it, we don't know where the bottom of him, him is his dad manny power is quite similar as well she only fell in in her first bumper when i won on her for jim bulger and continued to improve so look we, we don't know i mean we, we know as much as anyone else because his performance on the track are completely different than what he does at home. <laughs> I love that. I love that sort of surprise angle. Um, let's move on, though. Let's move on. Let's do a few chases. I'm actually bypassing the Albert Bartlett division because reading Tommy wrong, I put the top of the market and it's just a confusing race. And there's some other big names to talk about. Uh, Ilete Tomps in the Arkell. Is, are we underestimating this horse? He, I feel like we don't give him the credit he really deserves. Yeah, I think I think we've all been guilty of it, our, ourselves included, really. Um, look, as okay. a hurdler, Fasa Vega was a, was a much superior hurdler, and but if it looks like Ilete Thomas is better over fences, even though to look at him you wouldn't. He's quite small, he's quite narrow, he's not particularly long, but he's obviously got the heart and bottle for it. Um, I wouldn't mind that he got beaten in the Triumph because he was far too keen, and I draw a line through his Supreme Novice run. If you watch it, he misses the fourth last hurdle. And then Danny has to kind of rush him up around the outside and gets racing quite early. 
it was a messy race. It didn't go to plan with him. Um, it was a big field. I think smaller field over fences in the Arkle, and that's going to see improvement from him. And put it this way, his you know with Marie National a question mark and a question mark, but a lot of the top horses. Uh, he's one who is solid every time. Yeah, I like the consistency angle with him. Uh, we should just mention him, Fasal Vega. Like any chance of keeping, like getting the wheels back on him this season. Really, I feel like so much has gone wrong for him. Are we even likely to see him at Cheltenham at this point? Oh yeah, yeah. I think we've seen him at Cheltenham, all right. Um, you know, he's been first and second at the last two festivals. Uh, his jumping, his three runs, his jumping hasn't been slick for a two miler. Um, and you know, his dam was obviously a two and a half and a three miler, so she won four stairs hurdles to punch down. I think stepping up in trip will unlock his potential. I think it'll give his jumping a chance to be more effective. And I definitely wouldn't be writing him off. Okay, not writing him off. We will take that on board. Uh, now, I am a massive Factor File fan, Patrick. I just, I like every season, I sort of latch on to a nice novice chaser, and he's mine for this season. Um, can you tell me anything that could put me off him, essentially? Because I feel like my heart is leading here over my head, or is he, is he as good as I hope he is? No, I think you've got good taste, Vanessa. Um, oh. Look, he's. Uh, Look, he's, he's an armchair ride. What, what makes him so good is that he's sensible. Uh, he <laughs> settles. Uh, he, he's just efficient. He jumps from A to B. Uh, he's got a high cruising speed, but he has a turn of foot. You know, you saw to look at him, you wouldn't have thought he was a champ bumper horse. But, he, you know, he was beaten by a flatbread horse in that. And, yeah, I, I love him as well. I adore the horse. And I'm really hoping that he can confirm his promise here and that we can get him to the Gold Cup next year. Yeah, I do feel with him that, you know, obviously Cheltenham... Brown advisory uh, would be wonderful, but I very much am looking forward to him in, in 12 months' time and beyond. I just think that frame, everything about him, I could bang on about him, but I'm not going to. Let's move on to Gaelic Warrior. Now, if we're talking about performances that I can't get out of my head, his early season performances blew so many of us away. You know, his first two runs of the season and then obviously the disappointment when we last saw him and now everyone making these excuses for him with his atmosphere and his behavior before the race like where are we at with gaelic warrior and is is that pre-race worry a genuine worry or is that just a stick we're using to beat him because of what he did at leopardstown no i i think with leopardstown like nothing physical became came of it which is a good and a bad thing you'd love to have a more solid reason to why he ran so poorly um, it was fascinating watching the split screen with the left zone chase, you know, the speed they went, the, the two, the two horse race were 20 lengths or more clear of the 25 runner handicap chase at halfway, which was extraordinary. Um, you know, a, a wise man once said to me, you should forgive every horse one bad run. So, you know, I would definitely forgive him that. Uh, with regards pre-race things, I mean, last year, he's always had that, last year, I rode him the Neptune and he was going down to coming out down to shoot. He shook his earplugs out and bolted with me, nearly ran over one of um, Nigel Christian Davis's uh, lasses um, and still ran, a, still ran a really good race. Um, so we had to take the earplugs out of him down to start. So he's always been a bit like that. Now, I didn't see him in Leperstown. Some people were saying it was worse than normal. Maybe that was the case. Um, but for me, the bigger worry is he's definitely better going right-handed, you know? Yeah. Uh, so the horse has huge ability, but he is not at his best going left-handed. Um, now, maybe he's still nearly been good enough to win twice in Cheltenham, but it, that, it, that's the major concern for me, more so than the Leopardstown run. Is a concern indeed. OK, we move on. Uh, Embassy Gardens in the National Hunt Chase, Patrick. This horse has been sort of touted very early on as your ride in this race. And I think he's been described by Willie as kind of the perfect National Hunt Chase horse. What, what does that mean? Why does he fit the bills like so dramatically? And why was he the standout so early? I don't I haven't really sort of got a grasp on him. Yeah, look, I'm not sure I'd maybe go that far, but He's, he's, he's a big, wide, solid horse, um, usually very settled. He got very worked up in the Albert Barton start last year, but that's a funny kind of start. It's on a bend, it's a big field, um, it's downhill to the first, and everyone is rushing forward to squeeze in to jump the first in a positive position. The National Hunt Chase started much different. Uh, since they brought in the new rules in about 2018, it's a much smaller field for a horse to qualify. Uh, you can take your time. I think he'll settle well. Having a horse that settles is such a huge advantage over that extended trip, obviously. Um, 
ideally he'd love him to have a bit more experience. You know, he's, he's gone around essentially in two very small novice novice races. Um, but again, since the rules changed, the race has smaller fields, so the lack of experience is less of a disadvantage. Um, you know, his form, he has bits of very good form, but, you know, I, I think Corbett's Cross is, has much stronger form on the table. So it's for Arafel to step up. I'm not sure the prices are completely right for what Arafel has actually achieved. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that is probably partly to do with the comments after his latest run. That interview Willie did seemed to capture a few people's attention for the National Hunt Chase. So uh, maybe you're right. Maybe there's a bit of value elsewhere. But anyway, let's keep this show rolling. Uh, I forgot to mention when we're talking about the open horses, of course, El Fabiolo. Um, I, I, talking about horses that are just doing everything right, bless him. He really does do so much right. And again, if people are picking holes in him, it's probably in his jumping. But he never looks like falling, in fairness to him, even when he does make those little mistakes, Patrick. Yeah, look, the horse, he, he, he's a beast. He's, he's just powerful. He's, uh, he's keen. He likes to get on with it. He has his own way of jumping at times, but he seems to know where he's putting his feet. And look, a bit like a bit like you were saying about Constitution Hill. If if the horse turns up in his A game, he he should win. Okay, we'll just keep it simple with him. Like it. Uh, we are getting to the end. Uh, I obviously it'd be completely remiss of me not to ask you who you're going to ride in the bumper, Patrick. I have no idea. You can tell me if you like. There's about four or five at the moment. Um, I won't be riding any of the fillies anyway. I can't do it away <laughs> from them. Um, but look, Jasmine Devo was obviously the most imp visually impressive. Uh, I think can't go for do the, the, the best work. Um, you ought to know technically has the best form, having been seconds in the grade two. Um, and our gentle boy is the kind of he's a brother to Briar Hill. He's not flashy at home. Neither is Briar Hill. He won a twenty to one. He's the dark horse that just could come alive at the Cheltenham Festival. But look, I'll be waiting to see what works best next week, and then I can choose the wrong one. <laughs> okay all right um right look i think we're pretty much done with you i don't want to keep you too long and i'm so aware you'll be talking about these horses till the cows come home in the next two weeks or so final question i have for you patrick is what would you like to see at the Cheltenham festival yourself i don't mean whether it's like a winner obviously a winner for yourself would be great but i don't necessarily even mean a willy horse winning just what would you like from the Cheltenham festival itself what's your one festival wish if i could grant that for you uh, well, look, I suppose mostly I'd love to see the 21 Club return, but that's probably not going to happen. So what I most like to see this year at the Cheltenham Festival is Gallop and the Champs confirm that he is the sports superstar um, and regain his Gold Cup crown. Um, it won't be easy, but that would be fantastic if it could happen. Wonderful. Well, look, Patrick, if I could grant you that wish, you know that I would. Uh, but for the time being, thank you so much for your time. That was very insightful indeed. Uh, good luck with the build up to the Cheltenham Festival and we will see you there. There you go. Right, so I think it's safe to say there were some interesting snippets there from Patrick. And one of them, boys, as we move on to the Mayor's Hurdle, will be that there's not really any chance of Lossie Mouse switching to a champion hurdle if Constitution Hill doesn't show up, judging by their thought process and what we've seen of her. As a result, she's going to be a very short price favourite, Robbie, for the Mayor's Hurdle. She is a short price favourite. Does anything beat her? No. OK. On a performance in Cheltenham back in December, she wins. Um, and there's no way Willie Mullins is going to pull a four to seven shot out of a race to run as a seven to one shot. So uh, she runs, she runs here, she'll win. Um, Henry runs three nice mares, and then I think Hispanic Moon was very impressive in Punchestown um, last week. Would have a great each way chance as sixteen to one. Oh, nice, healthy each way bet. Okay, yeah. take that. Who would you like to throw into the mix, Jamie? Um, I I agree with Poppy. Um, I think Henry has the three fillies, uh, or the three mares. Uh, Fancy tell lady and tell me something, girl. Yeah, tell me something, girl. Magical Zoe? She'll go for the county, I'd say. Okay. Uh, tell me something, girl. Um, she was going quite well two years ago when she fell, and then she fell at the first or second in entry last year. Um, if she came back to any bit of form, she might just be one to run into a place. 
OK, someone to bounce back then. Um, other Away from lost your mouth, Richard, quick word on the mayor's hurdle from you. Anything to, for you? No, what I took out of Patrick's interview is that um, the age profile of this particular panel that uh, probably had to know what was the 21 club actually closed and where does everybody go now? So <laughs> if anyone knows where you go in, in Cheltenham, if you maybe send him a text or something, invite him along that he's not left lonely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he's got a bit left out. He's there knocking on the 21 <laughs> club door and it's been shut two years. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, he did mention at the top of the show that it was seven years ago that he won the Gold Cup, of course. So of course, yeah. we'll yeah. forgive him that. Yeah. Um, guys, let's move on. Let's move on at pace. Day two, should we kick off with, of course, the Ballymore? And given what everyone's just said, if Ballyburn tips up here, clearly you boys on the left here are very much going to expect him to win this race. Um, but behind him in the market, you do have the likes of handstands, for example, over here. I mean, we're talking about all these Irish horses, but the Brits will get their hands on a winner or so. Uh, you know, a horse like him might have an each way shout in here for the Ben Pauling operation. Away from Ballyburn, because we've spoken plenty about him. I'll start again with you, Robbie. Um, who else do you think has a chance in the mid div race? I think whatever, if Ballyburn goes supreme, um, whatever Willie runs here will go off favourite in Atlantique. The yeah. vibes I'm getting is that reading Tommy Wrong will go for the Albert Bartlett. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised if Mystical Power came here instead of going for the Supreme to take on Ballyburn and Tully Hill. And of course Jericho in there as well. And Jericho for JP as yeah. well as in the in the Supreme. So um, there's every possibility Mystical Power could step up and trip here um, from a win in the, his win in the Moscow Flyer and um, will be a big danger. So I think whatever Willie runs will go off favour. I thought Atlantic ran very, very well in the Lawlers and Nace. He made most of the running um, and he just got collared late on by a horse that was dropped in um, and probably outstayed him. So uh, I think in Atlantique is probably the selection pick of Willie's here. Um, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, I think, Jamie, I think people have judged Il Atlantique pretty harshly for that Nace defeat. You know, who's sort of obviously went off favourite for that race, was well fancied and, you know, gets beat by a stable mate. People go, oh, like, they're just quick to go off horses, aren't they? Yeah, and like he, he's, he's done not much wrong now, to be honest. He travelled, he jumped well. Um, I, I, I do think that Daryl Jacob gave um, reading Tommy wrong. I thought he gave him a really, really good Peach. ride. I Peach. thought he gave him a brilliant ride um, and just nabbed the other horse. Um, so will they change tack on Il Antique? Um, I'd say if they drop him in a small bit, he probably is the best horse in this race. Yeah. OK, well, he's a slightly bigger price because, of course, until uh, the cards are shuffled and we know where these horses are going, Richard, uh, it's kind of hard to have too strong an opinion. But at least with Let Antique, we are pretty confident this is going to be his spot. Yeah, and I'd like your, your angle too on handstands. Paddy Turley produced him, Declan Larbury wrote him. He, was, he looked impressive from day one. He was named handstands. They thought he was going to, 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 to follow that sort of route throughout his career. Captain Teague was only beaten a couple of links in the bumper last year. Don't know if he goes here or where, but you're looking in around that 20 to 1 bracket to try and find something because we're a little bit light. We're not a certain, there's not an yeah. obvious standout in it. So when you move to 20 to 1, you see handstands, Django Bay, Captain Teague, maybe in around 20 to 1, there's something there. I think Captain Teague is going for the Albert Bartlett. He may well, and yeah. I'm reading Tommy wrong as well. But if one of them pivots here, that's what, that's yeah. what I'd be looking. And of course, ground, as Robbie, you touched upon earlier, you know, that will make people's choices harder be. or easier Definitely. nearer yeah. the time. So there is something to bear in mind. Um, let's move on to the Brown Advisory. Cannot wait for this because, of course, this is fact to file time. Uh, very excited, as I've already mentioned to Patrick. Um, Robbie, I'm going to start with you. Am I wrong to be so overexcited about fact to file? Uh, no, definitely not. Um, I'm delighted he's running this race. I, was, I think Willie Mullins said during the week that this was the race he was, he was going for. Everyone was happy to aim for this race. Mm. Um, he ticks all the boxes. It's the Florida Pearl route going from straight from bumpers into love it. Uh, chases. He's a fine, big, scopy horse. You could say he won a two-runner race in Leperstown and he beat Gaelic Warrior, who didn't turn up. But the speed they were travelling going down the back straight, the way he was jumping, his stamina's going to be no issue. Stay away, Fay ran a grand race in open company the last day against Capadano and, and the real Wacker. But I think fact of fire would eat Capadano and the real Wacker, so um, I think he'd be very, very hard to beat. I do think um, Monty Starr will run a big race here uh, for Henry um, and, the, and the Maloney's. Um, he's a gorgeous big horse, was always going to be better chased than he was a hurdler. And he put up a, an exhibition of jumping and punches on the last day when he won. Um, he's come straight from New Year's Eve to, to the festival. He'd be good fresh and um, I think he'd run a big race. 
And a good to soft ground will suit him okay if that's what we get, or yeah, we want a bit softer? He just got beaten in, in uh, or sorry, he won in Clamel last year on the Trocious ground, so ground won't be an issue to him um, either way, I don't think. Okay, nice. Um, Richard, are we crabbing Factor File because he was in a match race and Gaelic Warrior didn't show up, or are we applauding that performance? You applaud, you, you applaud him, but you've got to trust your eye because Gaelic Warrior didn't show up, so we don't know to what level he didn't show up. He, you know, he, was, he just wasn't at the races at all. So you're basing your, your confidence in Factophile on your eye and on the fact that his price is now too short. So do you think he'll win the race? Yes, definitely. He's a credit to Dunica Doyle, who has Brave Man's Game, <laughs> Gentleman's Game, Factophile. He just keeps producing not just good-looking, strong sales horses. They, they always sell well, but now they're going on and they're delivering as well. So good luck to him. He could have a great week. Um, but if you had to have a bet in the race, he's too short of the price and you probably lean to stay away Faye. And is that the way you're leaning, Jamie? Yep, stay away Faye. Um, I thought it was a really, really good run in uh, Cheltenham last day. Like, open company. Uh, he jumped like an absolute handicapper. He was brilliant. He was really, really good for a novice. Um, he only had two kind of runs around um, country tracks in England. Before that, he had to make the run and do his own donkey work. But when you step up to that level and he's jumping... I just thought it was magic um, and he stayed galloping to the line, he's only beaten about three lengths, previous Cheltenham winner last year, stays, he's the one for me. Yeah, I mean that run in, we're, we're seeing him in action here, but the run at Cheltenham in, in the Open Company, as you boys have referenced, you know, he does have that, what I'm worried about as a fact of file fan is he has that bit of extra experience and in the hustle and bustle of a sort of more fast paced race and from your point as a view of the jockey Jamie that is going to stand him in a touch better stead than the classy factor file yeah look look at factor file is, is no doubt he's, he's a good horse um, you know but I just the experience that um, mm. stay away Faye has um, you know Matty Flynn had him as a pointer he's just an extremely good horse he stays very very well and um, yeah, I, I, Solid. I really, really like him. I okay. really like him. Solid view then. We like that. Mm. Uh, let's move on. Champion Chase. This, this discussion might be relatively short and sweet. Richard, I'm going to start with you here because, of course, El Fabiola has done so little wrong except the odd mistake in his races, jumping wise. But other than that, he's a winning machine. And as Patrick in that interview we did earlier summarised, we could keep this pretty simple. El Fabiola wins the champion chase, doesn't he? Yeah, we've two Derby Sale graduates in there. If Fernie Hollow came back to form the other day, it's probably a bit quick for him to come back. John Bond's mistake the last day just means that that, that race is, you, you can't take a line through it. He has beaten him before. I wouldn't just put a line through John Bond, but if I was having a bet in this race, I'd back Edward Stonish, nearly 10 to 1. Oh, would you? Mm, I just think he's going to make the running. He's going to get it probably his own way. And I wasn't hugely blown away by El Fabiolo at Cork. He was good the last day, but yeah, I just, I'd try something different. It's too yeah, obvious. I mean, if we keep Ed back in favourites, we're going to lose somewhere. You've got yeah, you yeah, to look like, outside the box. Hey, look, we've, we're, yeah. that's what we're here for. And Robbie, I mean, Edward Stone, when we last saw him at Newbury, I mean, that, those changing tactics, and maybe he stole it from the front, but he was lethal, wasn't he? Oh, he was brilliant. He's always been a very, very good jumper. Yeah. Very slick. I know he's fallen once, but in general, he's a very, very good, slick jumper, real two-miler. Um, and them changing tactics will uh, help Edward Stone, but they'll also help El Fabiola. And also, I want your insight from a jockey's point of view, because, of course, they caught everyone on the hop a little bit with those tactics when they first did it, when we last saw him. But that won't be the same at Cheltenham. You know, people will know that he's going to... The other jocks will know what's going to happen now. They, he, they don't have the element of surprise. No, they don't. And at the same time, when um, Edward Storm won in Newbury the last day, he was leading Fernando Civil and Boot Hill. This time, he's going to be leading John Bon and El Fabio. There's a, there's a slight difference in, in quality, so... Um, El Fabiolo, it'll suit him, I think. It mightn't just suit John Bon. Um, his jumping, his form around Cheltenham is not good enough for me. I think he's, he's better on, on a flatter track. Even his win the Tingle Creek wouldn't blow you away. Um, so I think, um, yeah, El Fabiolo to take all the beating. And I agree with, Edward, or with uh, Richard that Edward Stone is, is probably his biggest danger because I can't have John Bon around Cheltenham. Jamie, can you have John Bon around Cheltenham given the lack of a rhythm he got into when we last saw him? Oh, definitely. I can have him all day long, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a very, very good horse. Um, I agree with Poppy. Uh, he's just jumping. He, he, 
he he didn't get into a rhythm the last day. He grabbed at the second in Cheltenham the last day, and just after that he fell apart. Um, got it back halfway up the hill, and then to make the mistake at the third last or was it the fourth last again around the bend? Just it was it was silly stuff. But I still maintain I'd say if. Um, young Bone, James Bone, had had his time back again. Yeah, he would have waited longer, and sat, and he still would have won. I couldn't agree I think more. He just, I think I think he just rushed him up on the day. I uh, got a little bit too excited after he made the mistake, and if he had waited, John Bone would have won. They would have blamed the mistake, but he still would have won. Yeah. Um, but so instead, what's happened is he's had a hard race yes. to not win. Yeah. And a not ideal ride. Yeah, exactly. But look at th those things happen. Um, I, I think Nicky will freshen him up fine, and I still think he's probably the horse to give El Fabiolo most to do. And, and what I love about John Bon, I suppose, is his heart and his zest for it. You know, he doesn't get in a rhythm, and he makes that mistake, and he's still trying. Yeah, he's him. still like, he's still he's got like, a heart. Absolutely, like it was it was a fair mistake now. Yeah. Um, and, and as well as that, when you add on top of that all the jumping errors, the, the, the half a length he was losing the rest of the round, like it was it was going to be a good performance. I, I think it was a hell of a performance to do what he did, the way he jumped. So if Nicky can get him back fresh and well, he has to have a life chance. Were you going to jump in with something now? Just uh, we're talking about Nicky Henderson's horse at the moment. There is no trainer in England better at, pre at prepping a horse for um, <laughs> Cheltenham. But of L Nicky Henderson's last nine runners, Six have pulled up. Yeah, I saw the extraordinary stat there. Yeah. I'm very worried. It is, yeah. Two It'd be rare that you'd see something like that would, sort yeah. of bad stat. Look yeah. at Jamie laughing. <laughs> That's because Puppy's able I'm to get it off the I'm, phone. He's I'm able get, to get it. Jamie's an iPad. Before Richard gets it in, because he's using all the wrong <laughs> yeah, stats. Yeah, the stats. <laughs> stats. I have a big iPad. Um, You're doing it off your phone. It's good going, Puppy. 25% of his oh, last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, guys, let's wrap up day two with the bumper, of course, and I'm not even going to pretend to have a handle on this, but all three of you should. I genuinely believe that you're going to give us the winner <laughs> of the bumper. Uh, I will start with you, Richard. Uh, Morgine is your near enough top of the market. Jasmine DeVoe up there. Uh, Jalon Duderis as well. There's, you ought to know is single figure price. Plenty of names thrown into the mix. Patrick has no idea what he's riding yet. Doesn't even know what Willie's going to run, let's be honest. Uh, do you? <laughs> Definitely have no idea what we're just going to run. Um, look, I suppose Jamie mentioned earlier Firefox was a top lot on a Derby sale and he's leading fancy for his race. We'll get to brighter days ahead later. But there's two top lots from the festival sale last year. Um, Jalan Duderie and Romeo Coolio, both graduates of Dunica Doyles, both made a lot of money last year. And now they're back 12 months later Terrific, yeah. with a real live near favourites chance in the bumper. And it's great to see. It's great for Dunnock. It's great for our festival sale. And it's great to think they could be back as winners. I'm going to oppose them with the most... This was the most impressive four-year-old I ever saw win a four-year-old maiden, Tishan. Matt O'Connor bought him in this ring as a foal. Uh, his bumper run alone, you couldn't. He, I, I hope Harry Cobden rode him to, to get experience in and amongst horses because I think if he lets him flow in the champion bumper, I think he's an enormous talent. Right. Uh, so I'll just shade with our November graduate over our festival graduates, but I think it'll be a Tattersall's graduate. Love that. What a company man. Are you that much of a company man, Robbie? <laughs> I'm the farm man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I actually like Romeo Coolio. Oh, okay. Uh, he's a huge reputation. Um, I know they were very excited in Cullen Tra to go to the race course with him. Yeah. Um, and the form of his bumpers worked out very well. Uh, the horse he beat at Pat Fatty's Sporting Glory uh, won a bumper in, um, in Fairy House last week. He be beat a very nice horse at Henry's. So it wasn't on the day visually very impressive. The form has worked out. And I, I just think he's the kind of horse you'd love for a Cheltenham bumper. He's always laid back just doing enough all the time and I like think just huge improvement to come from this horse. To cost 420000 was he at that festival sale? I mean you see those sort of prices, you see him there, it goes without saying he's a horse for the future. Oh there's no doubt about that but he is, he just has everything, I see stamina in abundance yeah. and he's a stayer but he goes um, over jumps he'll be a stayer. And it sounds like the mind as well. And he definitely has the mind, well, it looks like he has the mind for it anyway, yeah. he's so laid back in, in everything he does so um, yeah, I, I think he's an each-way chance in the race. OK, well, enough out of you two, because, of course, if you've got Jamie Codd on the panel and you're talking about the champion bumper at Cheltenham, then we should have really come to him first here. <laughs> uh, Jamie, take it away. Come on, tell us, what wins the bumper? It, honest to God, there has been no... There's been a lot of good horses, nice horses, but there's been no standout this year. Yeah. Um, it's... it's I, I, I kind of have to go with Richard. Um, I think Tishan... 
and you're going on hype here. You're going on. Uh, he won like Ballyburn in Lockamore, um, a point to point. Visually, it was the most impressive four-year-old that we have seen in a long, long time. He backed it up in Ex Exeter, was it, in the bumper? Mm -hmm. The last day, visually, it wasn't. I thought he was going to be wow. It wasn't wow, but he won. Um, I, I, I'm going to side with him. I just think, going back to his point to point form, I think if he can, if he can just get that experience from Exeter, I think he's got a, he's got a great chance. Like this, this race could is just going to throw up something. Romeo Coolio form has worked out absolutely. Um, you ought to know, Willie's ran very, very well in Leperstown in the winners. And a grade two bumper behind Emmett Mullins' horse, who doesn't run because he he got hurt since. Um, That's so a he, shame. Yeah, so he could be um, a one as well. But I just think Tishan could be something special. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned there that there's kind of been no absolute wow performance, but that Jeroboam, whatever he's called, probably was the wowish. Yeah, performance yeah. really of the season. Absolutely. So it's obviously that's not his official name, but we'll get to that. It slipped my mind momentarily. <laughs> um, right, guys, let's move on to day three then. Day three, please. Uh, Turner's novices chase to kick things off. Is this an opportunity for the UK to get a grade one winner on the board here? We've got Ginny's Destiny and Grey Dawning up near the top of the market. Of course, Gaelic Warrior, we've already heard from Patrick in regards to maybe the not such concerns pre-race antics but definitely obviously the left-handed configuration of the track uh Fasal vega what sort of version of him is going to show up who knows so this fascinating iroko could be back in action corbett's cross won't go but those are just the top few in the market uh richard let's start with you it's a wide open one this one it is um i'd be interested in jamie's view on this because a horse i'd love to see win at the festival is american mike American Mike was bought and sold, sold by Michael and Anne Cullen of Whitehorse Stud. Michael has been well recently. If he's watching, we wish him, we wish him well. But I think it'd be a lovely result if American and Mike could win for him and for Anne. And uh, he was a graduate of the Doyles as well. Jamie knows him better than I do, so discuss. Yeah, look, at I, I'd agree with you. This is it's kind of very, very open. Um, you named out the horses that are probably not going. So, mm -hmm. like, American Mike, for me... I think Chasen has brought out um, a kind of a different level. I know he disappointed at, at Limerick at Christmas. I think Gordon is is definitely treating him um, a bit different since Limerick at Christmas. He uh, doesn't seem to be doing much with him at home. He's trying to keep him as fresh. But he travelled and jumped really, really well, bar one down the back in Navan. Um, missed that a little bit, but I think on nicer ground, like he has course experience in the bumper. He was second behind Vassal Vega. On his day is a very, very good horse. The trip will be no problem. And for connections, as, as Richard said, Michael and Anne there, um, I would really, really, really love to see this horse win in Cheltenham. Okay. So head and heart votes then for American Mike in here. Yeah, look at if there's, if there's any man looking down now, I think this would be the result of the festival for me. Oh, you see, I, we, we wouldn't know about these stories unless we had you guys on telling us about them. Uh, sentimental out the way, though, obviously. What actually wins the race? With the lads, a heart for me, definitely American Mike. Oh. But I would prefer to see a horse coming up in trip to a horse coming back in trip for a race at the Turners. It was over oh. three miles in, in Navan when American Mike won. He beat Nick Rocket well. Um, the horse I like is Facile Vega. Going up in trip, I think he's crying out for this trip. Well, as he, did Patrick, for sure. He travelled like a horse both days over two miles, like a horse that... Um, had a very high cruising speed, but didn't quick him off it. Neither time did he, did he pick up, he just stayed galloping. I think going up in trip to two and a half mile, you'll see a, a, a huge improvement in Vassal Vega. And we know he's got all that quality as well. It will be so interesting if that yeah, step up in trip just was, releases it was, the... It was interesting chatting to David Casey on the panel the other night. He said that um, he thought Vassal Vega didn't get what he needed this year, was to strongly run two mile races. Um, and he's going to get a strongly run race over two and a half, which would be just ideal from these horse with high cruising speed that just doesn't quicken. 
That'll be a serious bounce back to form in a grade one from what we've seen of him, though. Um, intriguing. Let's move on to the Ryanair, one of the future races on day t uh, three, I should say. Um, Jamie, I shall start with you here because this, this race is a lovely betting race. It's, it's nice and open. You can make cases for plenty in here. But Bambridge has been the clear favourite since Alaho, of course, uh, is out for the season. Envoy Allen next best up four to one to win again at Cheltenham. Stage star in there at around about nine to two. Conflated. Uh, won't go. Brave Man's Game won't go. Those sort of horses, Pictori won't go. And Capadano is going to go to Aintree, I believe, next. So really it's about those, those top three. Bam Bridge, I think he's a very healthy favourite in here. Good ground. He doesn't get beat, does he? Um, yeah, he does. Envoy Allen. Whee, here we go. Like, <laughs> I think I like... Look at this for a comeback run. He beats Pictori in second this day here, right? OK, Pick Dory maybe wasn't on his absolute A game and the mistake at the last threw his chances completely out the window. But watch this, Bambridge already has not beat, so we don't have to worry about that. And then Pick Dory goes and romps home in a grade one when we next see him. This form is red hot. He's bound to step up from this performance, fitness-wise. He'd been off the track for a long time. He's going to get good ground because that's what Cheltenham will be by the Thursday and he's going to win the so ride. I go over there and ask the question and if you want to get on... Sorry, to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was my pundit head. Pundit head. <laughs> Case made. Look, I've got two big views this festival. Back to foul Bambridge. So do you fancy him? You think he can win? <laughs> Do you chance each way or, strong, or would you back him on the strong nose? Views. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to say what I think now. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, Ben Briggs. Sorry, am I intimidating? People tell yeah. me I'm intimidating. What a show. Ben Briggs, hot take on. Yeah. <laughs> Wins. JJ Slevin. Yeah. Done. Oh, between, us, between ourselves, we think Envoy Allen will win, but we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you have it. Um, go on, go on. Envoy Allen. I, I just people want to knock this horse. I love this horse. I won a champion bumper on him. I just oh, love yeah. this horse. I swear to God, he's just. He's the nicest oh. horse that I have ever sat on. He is. He's the one. Oh, he's a dream. Um, Jerry Kalam in Down Royal, that's fine. Uh, good form. And he goes back into a Ryanair. Previous winner last year beat Shishkin. Shishkin is going to be placed in a Gold Cup. Nothing wrong with that form. That form for me is rock solid and he wins a Ryanair again. Okay, I'll get back in my box now. You rode Benbridge as well, didn't you? No. No, you didn't? Okay, so you're, you're definitely on the... I mean, it's funny what you say about how like people are keen to crab Envoy <coughs> Allen. I think when he sort of disappointed punters that day, he was such a short price favourite in the... Turners, was Turners. it? Yeah. Oh. And he, He'd only changed he fell. hands. No, he I know, I know, and he fell. Look, yeah. I know, but you know what, what I'm saying is punters and fans get disappointed, don't they, in a horse, and then they sort of have a bit of a black mark next to their name. Yeah. And I just feel that's what's happened with Envoy Allen, despite the fact, Robbie, he's got a terrific e record, all joking aside. Oh, he's an exceptionally good racehorse. Um, yeah. His performance last year in the in the Ryanair was, was top class and I think he'll win again. I think he'll take an awful lot of beating. Is he I as do. much of a gent as he's saying at home? Is he sort of that way? Like, is he, do people know him as a particularly nice horse? Oh, no. he is, but he was quirky. He's not a gent, no. He's he was, not a gent. Oh. He was no, quirky, no. yeah. Oh, sorry. Keith Donahue used to ride him in gardens and he done an unbelievable... I rode him through his bumper year um, when I was in gardens and then um, Keith Donahue took over then and he done a fantastic oh no this he's not simple oh he sorry wasn't a simple i thought right early, yes but as regards a model to look at him oh he's a beauty it's just a beautiful horse a beautiful yeah. horse he is and, that, yeah, yeah. um yeah. the know. opposite to jamie <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie can be tricky enough too. Yeah. <laughs> so you're with Envoy Allen. Very warm well, I, I do. I think. I think. The whole lot. Bambridge is very, very ground dependent. He is um, agreed. And he has to have a good ground. Envoy Allen is also a much better horse on better ground as well. So if the ground turns up good on the day, that'll suit Envoy Allen as well. So I, I think for me, Envoy Allen is, is probably one of Henry's best chances of the week. Wow. Um, I think he'll take a lot of beating. And um, then Rachel, Rachel knows him now. I think she, ah, she, she does. Yeah, yeah. Right she was brilliant last, last year and yeah. um, was brilliant on him in Down Royal. Yes. But he yeah. just doesn't quite see out the three miles. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, okay, you've got me worried now. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, final question to you is like, obviously, I mean, it seems an obvious one, but you're very happy with him at home. He's is he sparkling? Yeah, is he, no, is everyone, he bouncing? Davy Roach rides him out most days, and um, everyone's very happy with him and he goes there fresh as well so Envoy Allen's record as Richard knows when he's fresh is, is very very good does Bambridge win? <laughs> <laughs> retract cut cut <laughs> is this live uh, Richard you're going to make it the clean sweep and everyone's going to be laughing at me right 
Oh, look, he's a 15 times winner. It was very good to, you know, when, when, when Pointer started making that sort of money and he hit 400,000, there's a sense of pressure. You know, they have to deliver now. This is serious. And he absolutely delivered for us and, and, and for Jamie and for Gordon, for Chiefly Park and then for Henry. He's been so good for the industry beyond just mm. uh, the Pointer of the time. So, yeah, you, you have a soft spot for him. He just kept coming. I remember your, your, your conference the night before the bumper, sorry, the night after the bumper, uh, when he'd won, uh, we went back to the house and I said, God, I thought when Blue Starry got to you. And you were like, what? He was always going to pick up. How did you <laughs> think for a second? But there was a moment watching it, we thought, oh, Jamie's caught here. And you couldn't believe that, these, that, that we had this perspective of him, that he'd just always pull out more. So, um, yeah, he's always been good to us, so we'll, we'll stick with him. But listen, we'll be thinking of you when Dan Bridge <laughs> comes when up. When he leaves Dan Bridge three <laughs> lengths behind up the hill, I'll be like, yeah. won't be welcome back on that tack show. <laughs> yeah. um, let's move on to the stayers then, uh, the other feature race on day three. And Robbie, it's only right that I start with you here because, of course, Tiupu has been up at the top of the market for quite some time now. Haven't seen him for a very long time, but this, of course, has been his main target. Um, we saw what he did in the race last year. He was probably unlucky, really. How is he coming into this, for starters? He's in fantastic form, um, and it was always the plan this year to do something different. Um, he'd been to the last two Cheltenham festivals off the back of a run after Christmas, and it didn't work. He always won first time out. So after he won the um, Hatton's Grace this year, he beat um, Imperial Pass. The decision was made literally in the parade ring that he was going straight to the stairs hurdle. Well, now. we heard those dreaded words. He goes straight to the festival. And of course, for racing fans, you go, no, enough <laughs> of the straight to the festival. Yeah. But when you're connected to the horse, you do the right thing. Yeah, well, you've got to do what's best for the horse. And he is a horse. And everybody involved with the horse wants this horse to win a stairs hurdle. Um, he's a horse that's very close to my heart. I brought my last graded winner on him and had my last ride on the race course on him. No um, yeah, so and if I wrote him three or four winners, so his horse has been very good to me and I'd love to see him win a stairs hurdle. And you clearly are confident that this fresh approach is the right one with him? I think so. I, I think a lot of things went against him last year as well. Like, poor old Davy's head was fried come to Thursday and I think it, it wasn't his finest hour and he got hampered. He missed the second last, he got hampered in running going to the last. A yeah. lot of things went against him. Now, in saying that, some, as Richard said earlier, good horses find a way to win and he didn't find a way to win that day. But I think this year going there fresh, um, he'd be a better horse. Yeah, he's kind of the standout stare that you can pick the least holes in, I think it's fair to say, Richard. Because in behind, um, you've got likes of Crambo, a grade one winner, but you kind of want to see him do it again. You know, he beat Paisley Park that day at Ascot. Then Noble Yates, who's this kind of total enigma, doing everything the wrong way around almost, but he obviously won at Cheltenham. So Gerhard in there, flooring <coughs> pointer, a previous winner of the race. Paisley Park, for God's sakes. And then a horse like Home by the Lee at a big price. I know they've thought plenty of him for a race like this. Um, so it is wide open in behind him. Do you have anyone else you'd like to throw into the mix away from Tiupu? Yeah, I was, I was coming into it sort of Noble Yates, Paisley Park form, thinking there's my bit of value. But if you believe that not having a run, Davy wasn't as fine as our, and he was only beaten three parts of a length last time. Like if you, if you think there's that improvement in him, yeah, like he, he, I wonder had he found a half a length last time and won it, would you have come here and given him the other run because he'd won the race and everything had gone so well. But for the sake of that three parts of a length, he hasn't had a run. If that improves him, do you know what I love though? I love that Rob Corp prepared to run the two of them against each other. There's this thing you can't run two horses against each other at Cheltenham. Imagine the photograph that you guys would have if you're first and second with the two sets of colours in a grade one championship race at Cheltenham. I think it'd be terrific. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more with you. I did say to Brian that back before Christmas we were talking about he had the horses over two and a half to three miles. He yeah. said, we have too many horses in this division, we have to try and spit them up some way. And I yeah. said, what would be wrong with having a picture in the winners' oh. closet of the three of them standing yeah. in the first, second and third? Wouldn't it be incredible? So he, he wants to split them up a bit as well. So that's yeah. why Bob Ollinger goes to entry. But, um, it's mad that you've I kind of ended up with Irish Point, Tupu and Bob Ollinger all in that very close category together. Yeah, and they're all three very, very good hire. This is first world problems. It's Absolutely. fantastic to have. So yeah. um, it's great. But the only concern I would have would be, I'd be good for you, Vanessa, is if Bambridge wins the Ryanair, it's rattling. It's good ground, and that would be my biggest concern for Tibu. Yeah, I mean I, that's a legit yeah. concern for sure. Yeah. Um, Jamie, what's uh, your view on the stairs? Irish point. Oh, yeah, oh, I love him. Hell. Yeah, really, really like him. Um, I thought beating a Steerier Falange at Christmas eleven lengths. Uh, that's veteran form. Uh, Asteria Falange was second in Punchestown last year and I think Tia Pum might have been behind him. 
Um, mm. I think he's an improving horse. Uh, I just think there's more improvement in him than Tiapu. Yeah. Uh, Tiapu is a good horse, don't get me wrong. He's a good horse. I, I just really, really like Irish Point. And I think he will win the stairs. Okay. A few different names then in the mix for the stairs. Um, last race to cover on day three. We're rattling through these. The Mare's Novice, brighter days ahead. Um, again, Robbie, I'm going to start with you here because she's had all the hype out of the Gordon Elliott yard. Lots of talk about her. I mean, like, I don't know Gordon Elliott. You guys obviously do. It's not that often you hear the quotes that he said about brighter days ahead. Uh, is it? Like, am I, we're all reading into this too much or does he really love her? Mighty Potter was one. Yeah. Don Cossack was another. You probably remember. Is there anything else that he went to that level? Envoy Allen. Envoy Allen. Oh, it's a fair... I mean, that is... If, she, if there he's, there if he's she she throwing her into that sort of category mm -hmm. of yeah. discussions, like, is she, as much, is she a beauty for starters? Well, look at her there. Well, she's she, a, she's, she's, she's is. done enough of merit. Um, she is very, mm. very good. Um, again, I was a bit surprised the last day that they ran her over 2-5. I don't think that's a problem down the line, but she's coming back now into a two-mile race. Um, I was very, very impressed with Jade DeGruzzi in, um, in Fairy House. And I wonder if the hype around this horse, but brighter days ahead, is meaning that people are kind of forgetting about Jade DeGruzzi yeah, a bit. Yeah, like, I don't... I, down the line, I think this could be a better mare, brighter yeah. days ahead, because I think when she goes jumping the fence, she could be exceptionally good yeah. um, on what she's done over hurdles. But just for this race, I think Jade DeGruzzi is a big, big danger. I, I can see that totally, yeah. I, I, think, I think I'd be with you at the prices as well. I think Brighter Days Ahead's price has shortened because of the discussions and because of the quotes that have come out of these press days from Gordon. Is that fair to say, Jamie, do you think? Uh, yeah, no, definitely. Like, like, she hasn't done anything. Like, she's won every day. She hasn't been well. Um, mm. And she probably hasn't beat, a, 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 you know, a really decent mare yet. But... Yeah, I think the lads love her at home. Now, Garden obviously loves her and pedigree to die for. She probably has the best pedigree in the book at this wow. at this moment in time. That pedigree is happening. There's, oh, every horse is relevant. Like It's, it's a huge, huge pedigree. And um, uh, it'll be a great result. I'd love to see it for, for, the, for the Bleans down in Galway. Um, they produced her at the sale. Here and she looked immaculate. There. Yeah. Remember when she came here? Everyone was going. Like, obviously, people realised they wouldn't be able to afford her, but everyone was going down to look at her. She was that. She mm. was a model. You know, really? you, had to, you had to see her. Even the staff were going down. Did you see her yet? Did you see her yet? She was. And John Blehan knew. He said, "I mightn't. I mightn't have a store like this again." And she was rewarded yeah. for it. It was great to see. Look at as well as that. Like, and I said it before with Firefox. You know, when when um, sales need these big horses to mm. perform. She's one of them. Firefox hopefully will be one of them. Envoy Allen, you know. Oh, she keeps the sale in the headlines. Yeah, absolutely. They they keep the dream alive for 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 everyone really. And um, yeah, I look at when Gordon speaks like that about about a horse. You just have to sit back, listen, and um, I I can't wait to see her in Cheltenham. Oh, I thought she jumped really really well in Lab, and she was very slick. You know, the mare's novice hurdle is a race people will crab sometimes. But of course, this race is, could turn out to be an absolute belt of a race with the clash between the two horses we've already mentioned. And then if we're talking about Jade de Grugy's price, Richard, getting a little bit big off the back of the talk about brighter days ahead, then what about Dysar Enos, who's going to go here unbeaten? She's done absolutely nothing wrong. She, you know, you can't crab her either, can you? No, and a Harley Dunn graduate, he's doing a great job producing those uh, horses as well. So, but just on, on those mayor's races, I think I said it last year, and I, I'd make no apologies for saying it again. Without the mayor's program, without the bravery and the strategic thinking of the, the Cheltenham, whether it's the BHA and Cheltenham Racecourse coming together, they have changed the industry for mares. They have improved mm. it for the better. We're seeing from the Apples Jades, the Honeysuckles, the Lossy Mouths, they're there because of these races. So the brighter and days people, ahead. And the brighter days ahead. There are people who say, oh, well, if they weren't there, if they weren't there, the mares wouldn't be there. We wouldn't have the opportunity to have seen Honeysuckle win a champion hurdle, etc. So to compliment Cheltenham to the BHA, to everyone involved in that race programming, it made a wonderful moment last year in having Honeysuckle in her race, and we're going to see two cracking races this year. We'll see maybe the brilliant Lossy Mouth and a competitive race here. We need them, and we're very, very grateful for them. Okay. Let's move on then to day four, please, and we will kick off with the Triumph Hurdle. Um, Sir Gino, 
really put his head above the parapet sort of mid-season as the standout in the UK, standout juvenile horse in the UK. And as a result, he's been at the top of the market for the Triumph, obviously for the Henderson Yard for a good while now. Um, and is it fair to say, Robbie, that the... Uh, there's not probably not really be the standout juvenile here in Ireland as there has been with Sir Gino in the UK. Uh, no, the Irish ones have been beating each other all season. Yeah. Um, Sir Gino's performance in the trials day in Cheltenham was exceptionally good. Um, very, very impressive. Um, he came with a huge reputation from France and I think he's the one they all have to beat. He's the level they have to reach. The rest of them, of what's in behind him, Willie has the strongest bunch obviously going to, of the Irish, which he does for most races. But um, I like Majbra, his first run in Ireland in a grade one. He ran a bit keen, um, did a lot of things wrong and, and finished third behind Cargis, not beaten all that far. On this track around the, the new course in Cheltenham, it's all about stamina as well. I think well, Sir Gino's run around it already, so it suits him. But I think both Majbra and Stormheart of Willies are, could finish in front of Cargis. I think they're both the best of Willie's two in this race. Okay, and Cargi's got that great ride that day, didn't, didn't she as well? So, yeah, um, much of a much this night, you say, from the Irish. Um, have you done a deep dive, Jamie Codd, into the Triumph Hurdle? Yes, I have. Just now, in the yes, last 30 I seconds? Have. Yeah, they're not a store, they're not a pint of pointer. I don't really have an opinion. If they're not a store, if they're not a pointer, it's a no <laughs> from me. That's it. Okay. Is it a yes from you? I'd be very similar to Jamie, uh, except that there is an order of St. George that was bought as a foal that came through here as part of the Andy and Jim oh. Brown dispersal Mighty Bandit. I'd love to see him run well. They were very um, sporting, uh, the High Flyer team, and Warren Greatrix and, and, and Tessa in the way they bought him. And I wish them well with him. He's about 25 to 1. I'd say Mighty Bandit has a, I think Mighty Bandit has a big chance in the Boodles. And he might go that way as I well. But if this cuts up, Boodles. yeah, whatever okay. he does. Boodles, hope God the Boodles is as always. I mean, everywhere you go, I feel like I hear a Boodles tip. A boodle's good shout, good thing. Uh, we're going to do your handicap picks, by the way, at the end. So, you know, that's right, Jamie. Do a bit of prep for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've just given mine there now. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Um, I think you've just given mine there now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we won't be doing handicap picks. Um, the Albert Bartlett, guys, I can put my hands in the air and safely say this is a race I do not have a handle on, Richard. Uh, reading Tommy Wrong, Dancing City, High Class Hero, Shanag Bob, um, Gidley Park was so good the other day at Cheltenham, Captain Teagan here, we've already mentioned him, obviously ran so well in the bumper last season. Yeah, the betting suggests it's wide open and I this race has me fairly scrambled, I'm afraid to say. Yep, I'd agree. Okay, there yeah. I am with all those punchy views for the yeah. Ryanair and then I and get I give to this and I'm like... Nothing. I've got Absolutely. nothing. Yeah. I like Shanna Bob. Uh, Chris and John O'Donovan had him as a pointer. He he, he won, a, won a race in Ballon that worked out really well. I've mentioned Captain Teague earlier if he goes this way. And I like Pat Doyle, always seems to pull a Cheltenham winner out of it. He's, he's a great man to produce horses. And reading Tommy wrong, I could have any and all of them. And that doesn't mention high class hero or feel like Dancing City. I couldn't even start to get to the bottom of this. Well, this is, or that was, I think, going to be Shanag Bob uh, performance at Cheltenham, was it? But it's gone now, so we'll move on from that. <laughs> um, Robbie, I'm saying that I don't have a handle on the Albert Bartlett. Do you, is my simple question. I, I don't. The Albert Bartlett as a race often throws up big price winners. Um, we've why, seen why is that? It's just the hurly-burly of it. Just, it's kind of savage, It's a isn't real it? stamina sapping race. You know, they, they don't hang around as... You heard Patrick talking earlier on about the hustle and bustle at the start, the, yeah. the pace down over the first few fences. Um, it often, we often see a horse dropped in in this. I can't remember the horse's name, but Paul Carberry gave a Paul Carberry master class here one year. And one of Noel Mead's horses that was... A Gingston horse that was dropped in and he creeped his way through off a strong pace. So it's a race that suits a horse that's ridden to run well. Um, I do think Captain Teague has a, has a um, big chance in this race. If he goes this way, he was third in the champion bumper last year. Slightly forgotten horse, maybe. He's definitely a forgotten horse, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he's a chance. Reading Tommy Wrong, who we mentioned, I think his preference is to come here rather than go to Barring Bingham. And I think he, he'll probably go off favour if he comes here. Um, but the other horse I like is uh, Lecky Watson. I think stepping up to three mile, he's 12 to one shot. I'd give him a big each way chance. He was second to Slade Steel over two and a half in Navin, third in that grade one, that reading Tommy Wrong won in, um, in, uh, in um, nice. Nice. So I think um, Lecky Watson for me could be a, a big player here. And that is him there selling for 60,000 to that man, Harold Kirk. Um, who, who hasn't spoken about the Albert Bartlett? Just Jamie. Oh, yeah. 
Um, Jamie looks. No, <laughs> Jamie's still I, struggling around for his handicap yeah. now over there. <laughs> I'm still uh, still getting over the the triumph talk. Um, <laughs> scores and pointers here now. You should be at the relevant yeah. level. Yeah, exactly. This is I'm it. Going, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm only strong here, folks. <laughs> yeah. It's my time to shine. Well played. Well played, that man. Yeah. Um, I love Shanna Bob. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just think he's got the. I think he's got the the profile for this race. Um, stays well. He'll be fresh. He hasn't run since uh, December. Here we I go. Think. We get to see him now. Um, this is it. Yeah, I. You know, he's unbeaten. He's just. He's got a raw individual in the way he goes, though, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. But um, he's obviously got a huge engine, and you know, second run over hurdles to win a Grade Two around Cheltenham. His course experience. Um, I like this horse. Um, Captain Teague is the other one. Um, he'll be stepped up to three mile. He hasn't run beyond two, three, I think two and a half. Uh, if he gets the trip, he's definitely classy enough. Um, but I just think Shanna Bob could be, could, be the, could be the one here. Yeah, I mean, you get the impression when you're watching this back, and, you, and I, I thought it at the time as well, that he's almost not putting it all in. And I don't mean that in a negative way, mm. as in, I don't mean that because he's being difficult. I just mean that he's learning on yeah, the job. Abso Do you absolutely. See what I, mean? um, I, ju I, just, I just think that he could be, being a maler, he will stay. Um, and, you know, that's, he's coming in fresh and well. If he's, if he's in good order, he's, he's the one for me. OK, let's move on then to the big race, the Gold Cup, of course. Um, Gallop in the Champs is the market leader in here, obviously. Won the race last year off the back of the two Leopardstown wins. One at Christmas, one at the Dublin Racing Festival. Both of them pretty impressive. Taking on Fast or Slow, who of course tried to put it up to him, Robbie, when we last saw him at Leopardstown and didn't manage it. Shishkin, the enigma that is Shishkin. Jerry Kalam, Lohan Press and Brave Man's Game and Gentleman's Game, plus Hewick, maybe not. Oh no, Corrit Rambler does run, in fairness, as his prep for the National. I mean, those are your top nine in there. What a race this is going to be. I'm so looking forward to it. Even though we've got a standout, and you could just say it's just simple, Galloping Deschamps wins. But these races are never quite that simple. And I think those horses in behind shouldn't be underestimated. Oh, definitely not. Um, they're all very, very good horses. And nothing's ever simple in a Gold Cup, no. as was seen last year from Galloping Deschamps. So much went wrong for Paul Townend on the first circuit last year. He missed the start slightly. He didn't jump the first few fences as well. Also, he all then finds himself a lot further back than he wants to be. He has to play his cards the way he's dealt them at that stage. And he played them very, very well. They went a strong gallop and he was able to creep his way through. And good horses, when things don't go the way, they come through and win. So um, if he turns up like he did in Leperson at Christmas, he the wins and, and that's it. I want to ask you about the new tactics with him, obviously riding him in that more positive fashion versus the sort of hold-up position we saw him in 12 months ago. He's clearly a slightly different ride for Paul now. Uh, do you think a, a better ride for a Gold Cup, if you see what I mean? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you have to relax in a Gold Cup. If you don't relax in a Gold Cup, you have no chance. And when he was a novice chaser, when he won in Cheltenham, he was a front-running, exuberant, explosive jumper. They, they thought then he was a Gold Cup horse, but the one thing he had to do to win a Gold Cup was settle. So they dropped him in in his races to teach him to settle. And he's actually gone the other way now. He's gone more relaxed. After two runs when he was beaten in the John Durkin, or last year in Punchdown, and then in the John Durkin, straight away Willie says we need to change tactics. And Paul said we need to change tactics. Book him out in um, at Christmas and he was breathtaking. Oh, well, that gone, was yeah. as good. Like, I was stood down the back straight that day and... When they came past me, going down to the last circle, they were rattling. They were going a proper gallop. Well, I, we, I said it to Patrick in that interview. It's like, it's, it's rare when you're on a racetrack. Not rare, but it's only occasionally when you're on a racetrack and you see a performance that really in the moment makes you go, wow. Often you watch a race back and you think, wow, that was more impressive than I realised. But I'm stood there at Leperstown and from the last to the line, the, way, the speed he went past me, I yeah. was that side. Yeah. I mean, it was really like, wow. That is cool. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable performance um, at Christmas and then again when he beat Jerry Colum and then again at the Dublin Racing Festival. I don't think he was at his brilliant best because I think Paul rode a very clever race on him. He went a lot slower. He didn't let him run and jump the way he did. I think he was trying to be as conservative as he could because he knew Cheltenham was only five weeks and away. And he's kind of shown off at Christmas. He doesn't need to do that no, twice in the season. To, yeah. it was actually, I was a, a, bit, a bit surprised that after the performance at Christmas that Willie ran him back again in the Dublin Racing Festival. But 
the Dublin Racing Festival is what he likes to, to win at, so he wanted to go there with Gallopin. Um, but it's not all about him, as Shishkin is a very, very good horse on his day. Um, he was going to win the King George and he came down a second now. He stumbled two strides after. It was just one of those very unfortunate Freak. things. He made a horrendous mistake at the third last in the Ryanair last year and flew home. If he hadn't made that mistake, he would have really put it up to him by Allen. Um, Jerry Kalam is a, is a very, very good horse as well. Um, needs to jump as, <coughs> as well as he can. Nothing can go wrong for him in the Gold Cup. Everything has to go his way um, to lay it down to Gallop and Deschamps and Shishkin. And, um, Brave Man's Game, who was beaten by Gentleman's Game in the Charlie Hall. I think Gentleman's Game lacks experience, but I think he's a good horse. He's an out and out stare, and I think at 25 to 1, he's got a good each way chance in the race. Trained by a genius? Trained by a man who knows how to win a Gold Cup, so yeah. um, Mouse will have left no stone unturned. I think if he gets there healthy and well, he'll have a big each way chance. Oof. Who are you throwing into the mix then, Jamie? Come on. Um, I, love, I love seeing good horses, and... Gallop in the champ is obviously like he's he's a superstar. I I I just not sure um, what way they're going to ride him this year. I think last year it kind of it, it fell Paul's way that he had to ride him like that, and then he came through when he was impressive. I I have a funny feeling Faster Slow could turn him over in the Gold Cup. Really? Yeah, uh, he's four and a half lengths behind him in Leopard Town. I know Gallop in the Champs won well. I just make a case for him because. Um, he has that handicap experience from Cheltenham last year, turned over by Corrie Rambler, 23 or 5 runners around Cheltenham, so the hustle and bustle is not going to annoy that horse. He, he can actually be the horse this year to let everything in a Gold Cup happen and then possibly be the one to pick up the pieces. Interesting. And I, I, I'm not sure, I'm just going to be very interested to see what way Paul is going to play it in a Gold Cup this year. Really, really am. Puppy thinks he'll book out, he's going to be an easy ride. I'm not so sure. Oh, it's, it, do you know what? Talking about it gets me genuine. If you can't get excited about a race like this, we're clearly in the wrong game, obviously. But it's just fabulous, isn't it? Having that horse at the top who's got all this star and sort of swagger about him. And then these horses in behind that you can legit make cases for right up to a Corrick Rambler running into a place. You're not mad to say that. No, no and like Martin Brazel to me is, is he's a bit of a genius he, he's so so good um, gives horses time lets him progress and as he's done with this horse and now he's in the big time it just wouldn't surprise me if he wins the Gold Cup what I also love about fast or slow is his pinpoint accurate jumping touch wood mm. touch wood yeah big wood touch there why are you huffing and puffing no absolutely he's slick he's very slick um, I just look at like uh, Gallop and Deschamps at Christmas was, was off the scale we know that but if for any reason he didn't run, it's still a vintage Gold Cup. The depth right back. No one's even mentioned the Hewitt. King George Hewitt. winner. Yeah, well, Charlotte will give him a mention. I'm a Shishkin <laughs> fan. Always have been a Shishkin fan. I love him. We've plenty of Derby Cell graduates here. Shishkin and Jerry Kalam and Brave Man's game. But yeah, I suppose the only thing you have to say about Gallop and Deschamps is he's so good. How has he managed to get beaten those times that he did? So there's there's clearly an underperformance in him. Maybe it's just going right-handed. Maybe it's punches town. But there is there is that run in him because he's so far superior. How does he manage to get beaten? And and he does. So there's an army of horses here capable of beating him. So if you're a punter, you've got a chance one. I'll be on Shishkin at seven to one. Okay. Goodness, can't wait for it to all unfold. Oh, you said it. Yeah. Um, that's been a rattle through, of course, the four days. But before we let you lads go home, shall we do handicap selections or anything else to mention, actually? Questions, questions being told by the audience, our lively audience, that we've, <laughs> that we've got some questions. Oh, oh number one. <laughs> oh, yes. Nicely done by a mysterious, <coughs> a mysterious tweeter, I see. Uh, what's Jamie's LeBake for this year's festival? Of H -L -J -M. course. HLJM. Who could that be? I, I, I can't. M H. <laughs> uh, I can't imagine who it could be. But anyway, 100 to 1 shot there, Jamie. Yeah, Jamie Cog, come on. <laughs> you've, been, um, you've been dining out on that LeBake tip for quite some been, years now, haven't you? Yeah, but that's it. Like, like, How many times are you ever going to get another LeBake? You're not going to get hey, it. Hey, look, whilst we're here, I once went through the card at Dundalk and I've been dining out on it. That was 12 Did years you? ago. Yes. 
But you don't keep going on about it, yeah. though. He keeps going about <laughs> 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 No, I... Um, so you should be tipping up shish kills, or he refused to race as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. Um, An angle in. No, there's no, there's no lebeek. Like, you, you're not going to have that opportunity again, so there is no lebeek. Okay, yeah, no lebeek. No. Uh, whilst we wait for our next question to come up, why don't you kick off then, Jamie, whilst you're on a roll, with a handicap no, selection? No, Vanessa. I, I asked Vanessa. you... Just go to Popey. Jamie, or come on now, Jamie. You can't be like just that. Just come back to me. Okay, I'll come back to you. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> Poppy, we will start with you then in terms of maybe a handicap selection, which you've already given in fairness in the Boodles, but or just another horse that you'd like to mention that might go well at the festival. I know there's lots of races we haven't got stuck into. Is there anything else that you're really looking forward to seeing run from your point of view in terms of your many different roles? <laughs> Manel Indo. Oh. Cross country. In the cross country. Race. Yeah, I thought yes. he ran a blinder in December. Oh, he travelled so well, didn't oh, he? he? he travelled and he jumped like a dream for Rachel all the way. She came back in, she was smiling from year to year after finishing fourth, which wouldn't be Rachel. She'd usually be given out after finishing fourth in the race, but <laughs> she was so happy with him. He really enjoyed it, he loved it. And I think he was giving over a stone and a half to everything in the race that day, so he's off level weights. Um, and I think he's never been out of the first two at the festival. Um, I think he'll maintain that record. I think he'll go very well in the in the cross country. Would you have to do much schooling with him? Obviously, he took such a liking to it when we saw him in that race. But would you just go there knowing that he's going to be fine? No, oh, he's just an old dude. He's um, <laughs> he was actually in the indoor school in, in Henry's yesterday, having a loose school, and he was going around like an old pro. He just does everything. He's just such a dude. So um, yeah, I I think um, he, I'm really looking forward to him in the cross country chase. Courtesy of our next question, we are biding Jamie some more time here. So, uh, <laughs> Robbie, this is another question for you. What does Robbie think is Robka's best chance of a winner at the festival? Um, I think Tiapu. Yeah, I mean, yeah. be kind of mad to... Yeah. Go against that, given his profile for that stairs. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait for it. Now we've done the talking about it, it really does, like, it just gets the blood flowing, doesn't it, Richard? Doesn't it just? A yeah. couple of weeks away. Can't wait. You're all season waiting for it, and then we get four days of And do you know what? If Banbridge is at the bottom of the hill, and Envoy Allen him? is at the top... You should have said... I mean, just because you're asking the question, don't you shouldn't have felt afraid to chip in. Tips, yeah. Yeah. If there's any other races <laughs> you have a view on, you should really let us know. Yeah. No, no, you're here for just that. Just Banbridge. Yeah. <laughs> Back to file as well, my two short price favourites. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll be more on original near the time. Stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. Stay tuned. Um, what, what, anything else you'd like to add into the, to the handicap mix or any other names to mention like Robbie's done? Listen, Jamie doesn't have a bake. I actually do. Ah. <laughs> As luck would have it. It's been a horse I've been following for a while. Here we um, go. Viewers may know. I saw him win back in November 22. That was in France. He's only beaten 10 or 12 lengths last year at the festival. He's got a lot of experience. Since then, he's been third, second, third, second. He's keeping a lovely handicap around the 120s. He has got entries. Hang on. The Wi-Fi is slow, so you're going to have to wait. <laughs> he has got entries in the Wi-Fi. Oh, no, he does. He's entries in the Carroll Cup, the County Hurdle, the Martin Pipe, wherever he goes. 33 to 120. Well, it's not quite Lebeck, admittedly. Bad. I think he's the one. Bad does ben not Pauling have the head. Ben Pauling is going to get a winner. That's, his, that's, that's, that's my handicap bet, wherever he goes. If you brought him a psychologist the week before, you might have a chance. See, that's where you'll go wrong. The He's way he travelled at Ascot the other day and just down tools. He should have won that race. Lord knows what he hit and running. Listen, I put a lot of effort into finding bad here now, so I really <laughs> I'd, I'd like you to respect the effort. Sorry, I, <laughs> I don't know I mean, why I, I'm having some a Some might here. say I put more effort than Jamie, who's still putting effort in. Have you found yeah, me yet? Look at Jamie, we, flat we out on that iPad. We can't hold this any longer. Flat we, out on we that We filmed iPad. for the last five minutes for you to <laughs> yeah. find one. Come on, let's wrap up. <laughs> and yeah, no, just hit. Go on. She was Googling Michael Jackson's bad. I was wondering, what is this man on about now? God on <laughs> do you have anything else for us, Jamie? Seriously? I d I, no, I do, actually, I do. Um, uh, Mascada in the Grand Annual. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I know she's up in the weights from last year. Um, I think um, uh, she had a good run behind... You were going to pronounce this, because I'm not great. What was that? Allegor Al 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 de Vassi. Yes. Nicely done. Um, Is that right, the way? Behind yeah. El Fabiolo as well in Cork and I think that the Grand Annual, Grand Annual, the speed will suit her. She's owned by the Marigas. I think they have three horses going to Cheltenham Hopefully this year. Hopefully three, yeah. Like it's um, great Mascada, story. Mascada, 
uh, Blanche Lady and Hispanic Moon. Yeah, wow. they're big, huge supporters. All three of straight answers, definitely. Yeah, and they're huge supporters here in 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 Tats with Foles. They buy stores, they sell stores. They're 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 brilliant people for the industry, and I think she's got a great chance again. Okay, Mascada then in the Grand Annual for Jamie, and he took hours looking at those handicap weights that were released, of course, today to work out his handicap pick. Um, guys, I think we're done and dusted. I think that's it. No need to fist pump. It's been, like, it's been, it's been a great hour and a half or so. Um, no, in all seriousness, Robbie, best of luck to you and your team that you're obviously connected to at the Cheltenham Festival. Same to you, really, Jamie. And you, Richard, with your connections to all the horses that have gone through this sales ring and beyond, of course. Uh, here's to an excellent Cheltenham Festival. I personally cannot wait for it. To you guys out there who watched and who hopefully will watch over the coming days and weeks building up to the Cheltenham Festival, be lucky. Go well. That was our Cheltenham Festival preview show. Enjoy the four days. <laughs>